As time passed, the princes grew into young men. Their grandfather Bhishma realized that in order to become all that they could, the princes will need more than just the wisdom of Kripacharya. They needed a teacher who would teach them mastery of all weapons and the way of war. What Bhishma did not know was that destiny was bringing such a teacher to Hastinapur. One day, when the princes of Hastinapur were playing outdoors, Bhim underestimated his own strength and threw the ball too high and it landed in a deep well. As they looked down the well with despair, Arjun spied a Brahmin coming towards them. Something about the poor man struck Arjun as being singular and powerful. The Brahmin, who said his name was Drone, looked into the well with them. He smiled. Then he fetched a reed of grass and threw it straight down the well like an arrow. Arjun noted that his aim was perfect even without a bow. The reed struck the ball. Then, Drone threw another reed, and another, and another. Each reed hit the one before it and extended outwards from the well. Eventually, Drone grabbed the last reed and pulled the ball out of the well with the rope that his perfect aim had created. The princes asked the Brahmin if he would pay a visit to their grandfather, the famous Bhishma. Drone replied that that indeed was his purpose of visiting Hastinapur. Well, the boys were only too happy when they saw that Bhishma regarded Drone with respect and embraced him like a brother. Even though they did not know what transpired between the Kaurav Grandsire and the Brahmin, they were eager to start becoming the warriors that history needed them to be. Before long, their dreams would come true and Hastinapur would have its new protectors. Under the expert eye of Dronacharya, the Pandavas began to learn the ways of war. Dronacharya's skill with weapons and techniques of war was rivaled only by his eye for talent. He observed his students closely and recognized their abilities early on. Yudhishthir, for example, proved to be an excellent charioteer. He took to navigating the battlefield like a fish to water and quickly became the best person to have behind the reins. Madri's sons, Nakul and Sehadev, became talented swordsmen and wielded blades better than anyone. Under Drona's watchful eye, they learned how to use their swords to keep many enemies at bay at once. The strongest son of Pandu was Bhim, and it didn't surprise anyone when he chose the mace as his weapon of choice. What surprised them, however, was Bhim's sheer strength in the battlefield. At his best, the boy could overpower even the strongest of adults. But the true surprise was Arjun, who turned out to be the perfect warrior. He wielded all weapons with equal ease and was adept at hand-to-hand -hand combat as well. But the art he chose to excel in was archery. Drona understood the reason. Archery required discipline of the mind. Alone among all of Drona's disciples, Arjun and Drona's son Ashwatthama showed enough promise to be taught the use of Devastras, the divine weapons. These are weapons that controlled the elements. Knowledge of them was imparted only to the worthiest of students. The secret behind Drona's passion was revealed the day he took them to the borders of Panchal. Arjun felt a strange tug at his heart when he beheld the faraway palace. But he learned that Drona wanted only one thing from this kingdom. Vengeance. It was during a trip to the forest that the Pandavas discovered Iklavya. They were out exploring and one of the dogs they had sent ahead of them started barking. As they followed the sound, the sound suddenly ceased. It turned out, someone had shut the dog up with arrows and the way they had done it was a sight to behold. The dog had not been hurt, but its mouth was full of arrows which had been so precisely shot that they were jamming the animal's mouth completely. As everyone marveled at the dog's condition, a single tear rolled down Arjun's cheek. His ambition of becoming the world's greatest archer seemed to be at an end. Whoever this was, he was greater than Arjun. When the Pandavas sought out the archer who had displayed such great skill, they found Eklavya, a Nishad boy. He was no warrior, but a mere hunter. He was the prince of no kingdom, 
he was not even a kshatriya when eklavya found out that he was before the princes of hastinapur he kneeled and paid his respects he asked them what he could do for them before anyone could ask him anything arjun asked him a blunt question who was his guru and from where had he learnt the art of archery eklavya answered with one word drone while the pandavas stood about wondering how it could be that their teacher drone had taught this forest dweller arjun rode back to hastinapur to demand answers from drone he accused drone of betraying him and his ambition but drone had no knowledge of this mysterious student of his upon coming face to face with eklavya drone asked the nishad boy why he considered him his guru eklavya bowed to his teacher and showed him an image of drone that he had crafted with his own hands he reminded drone that once long ago he had come to drone and asked to be accepted as a pupil and that drone had refused him saying he only taught kshatriyas drone was speechless for a moment eklavya's thirst for knowledge had not only surpassed arjun the pandav prince it had also defeated drone himself by merely practicing in front of a handcrafted image eklavya had made himself into the world's best archer drone suppressed the urge to praise eklavya's devotion he buried the part of himself that valued fairness and justice he asked eklavya for his guru dakshina he demanded that the nishad boy cut off his right thumb and give it to him eklavya did not lose a moment and did as his guru asked drone walked away from the forest knowing that there was no way eklavya would be the world's greatest archer without the thumb on his right hand he took no pleasure in the fact that he had effectively ended the legend that could one day have been eklavya after completing his education young drone mastered the art of archery to learn the art drupad the son of the king of panchal became drone's fellow student in his hermitage during the training the friendship between drone and drupad grew stronger and they became very close to each other in his youthful enthusiasm drupad often told drone that he would give drone half his kingdom after he became king drone however never cared much about acquiring wealth after a few years when drone got married he suffered poverty and wished for wealth for the sake of his wife and little son ashwatthama drone then remembered the promise that drupad had made to him during his childhood when drupad ascended the throne of panchal drone was confident that drupad would treat him generously and would give him a part of his kingdom drone went to panchal and reminded the king of their friendship and the promise that he had made drupad had changed he was drunk with pa and refused to recognize drone he denied ever having made such a promise and insulted drone for daring to appear before him drone left the palace in rage and vowed to punish the king for humiliating him he knew that drupad would soon bear the consequences of his action as a kshatriya yudhishthir was bound to accept all challenges related to gambling and fighting knowing full well the deceit the gauravs were employing yudhishthir agreed to the invitation having made his decision yudhishthir made arrangements and set forth their journey to hastinapur while everybody was celebrating the birth of drupad's son they saw another figure emerge from the fire this time the figure was that of a girl from the sacrificial fire drupad was blessed with a daughter Drupad named his son Drishtadyumna and named his daughter Draupadi. 